I've come to Barcelona today to drive the new Cupra Tavascan. There'll be a link to that video in the description for this somewhere, but I noticed out the back, they've got some Cupra Born VZs. That's the new fast one. I love Born, so the fast one's really getting me excited. So I distracted the people with some pork products, stole the keys, and I'm about to have a go. Now, I might get arrested, so please like the video and subscribe and leave some comments so I've got something to read when I'm in Spanish prison. The VZ represents a bit of a big upgrade over the standard Born. Although it never had daft performance, the 201 brake horsepower always felt plenty and it was really good fun to drive. It remained refined too, so it was never tiring. Sort of sporty without being raughty, if you like. The VZ name is a shortening of the Spanish word veloz, which translates into English as fast. To live up to that name, it has a new motor at the rear which produces 320 horsepower. That's 40% more power than existing Borns. It also has 75% more torque. To put that into perspective, it's about the same as a Porsche 911 had a decade ago. And it means that this is a second quicker from the 0-62 sprint than the current fastest Born, which is the V3 77 kilowatt hour with the e-boost button. I mean, 5.6 seconds is fast enough in anybody's book, really, but in a car like this, it gives it a real punch. Top speed has also increased by 25 miles an hour to 124 miles an hour, which could be handy if you need to flee from the Spanish police. They've also managed to find an extra two kilowatt hours of battery capacity from somewhere, which takes this up to 79 kilowatt hours. That means it's got a range of 335 miles, which is the same as the V3 version with less power. Also, it will charge at 185 kilowatts, which is really quite a lot for a car like this. There are some subtle styling tweaks too. There are two new colours available only for the ZZ. Dark Forest, my favourite, and Midnight Black. These new 20-inch alloy wheels have wider, high-performance tyres too. Oh, and there's this VZ logo in dark chrome housed on the vehicle's boot, as well as Cupra lettering in a dark chrome colour. Inside get sports seats, a slightly larger 12.9 inch infotainment system, and you can pay extra to have a Sennheiser 425 watt 10 speaker audio system. There's a particular interest to me because when I ran a Bourne, I noticed that the stereo sounded awful. It had the kind of sound quality of one of those musical Christmas cards you get. Unlike most electric rivals with this sort of power, the Bourne VZ isn't four wheel drive. All that power comes from the rear motor and goes to the back wheels. That means the front wheels don't have to do anything but point in the right direction, which means the steering feels really natural and responsive. On the steering wheel, I've got two little buttons down here which scroll me through the drive modes. I don't have to go through 17 different menus on here to get to my drive modes, they're just on here. And I can use this one and scroll through them, or this button on the right hand side, which has the Cupra logo. If I press that, it takes me straight to Cupra mode, which gives me faster throttle response, more positive steering, that sort of thing. It's not something you want to use every day. The normal mode is fine for that. But if you find a nice twisty road or you go on a track day, for example, that's going to be the one you're going to want to use. Even in normal mode, the steering has a really nice feel though. It's really well judged. There's no nervousness about the dead ahead and it weights up nicely as you go around the corner. And there's loads of grip. Those big tires ensure that you're going to struggle to unstick this, even though it's only two wheel drive. If you come out of a corner and you accelerate, the back squats down and you just grip. It's great fun. It's that 75% extra torque that really makes a difference though. When you put your foot down, you really feel it push you back in the seat. It means that overtakes are an absolute breeze. One of the great bits about the Bourne is the way that it can do everything you want it to really. So you can drive along a motorway like this in perfect refinement. You can have fun when on a twisty road and you can take the family out and they won't complain that it's got a really harsh ride or is too noisy or that you're driving too quickly. I guess this car's biggest competitor will be something like the MG4 X-Power, which has much more power and will win any top trumps competition. It even costs less too, but that car feels less polished than this ball. This car feels like something which has been engineered to have fun, while I seem to recall the MG sometimes feels like you're trying to steer an out of control rocket. We'll get them together in the UK as soon as we can to see if my memory is serving me correctly. I made it back, I didn't get arrested, you won't need to send me a file in a cake in prison. I really love this car. It's so practical every day, but it's so much fun when you want it to be. I'll take one in this forest green, please. 
So if you could like and subscribe, it means that I get paid and I won't have to steal one again.